Got to finish. We've got to. Uh, uh, we've got to finish chapter twenty. Okay. And Caitlin, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to go. I sent you an email telling you to go home. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'll make it. I'll just get Ben sick, but that's all right. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to point you out there in the middle of your TB attack. But anyway, uh, all right. What we're going to do here is we're going to show how electromagnetic waves work. Okay? You're going to see electromagnetic waves. Basically, all right, let's hold it down now. Uh, basically, electromagnetic wave works. You have to accelerate an electron. It's an accelerating electron. So, if it's always changing direction, Okay, when that electron is in a, when an electron is, basically what we do is we put an AC generator on this thing, and I just, I'm just going to let this thing oscillate, okay? And then it's going to start a wave, and what that wave does is you get a little wave pressure coming out here in the wave, and if it's on the same frequency as this radio station here, uh, or as this house radio, or your uh, little antenna that you got coming off of your radio or something like that, okay, as it comes off there, it will pick up the signal. And we'll talk about that at the end of chapter 21, actually, which is actually the cool part that shows that you've got a, a capacitor that you adjust in your car stereo. You didn't know that that's, this is what you were doing. You have an adjustable capacitor inside your car stereo. That's how you change stations. Okay? That's how you change stations. All right? So, anyway, so here we go. So we oscillate this thing. Boom. There it goes. There it goes, your electric wave. All right, there goes your electric wave, up and down, and boom, it picks it up over here. All right, so there's the positive electric field, oh, and then it comes out, oh, it wants to join it, whoops, and it goes away, and so it's flipping back and forth. So, there's your electric field. In the interim, meanwhile, back at the ranch, you have a B field that's also going from here. You've got a, you've got a magnetic field. That's why... Um, some antenna, like on big yachts or something like that. When I used to go to San Diego, I used to go and look at the at, at the San Diego Harbor. I don't know, I don't know who these people are that have this kind of money. But anyway, because to store your boat in or your ship in the San Diego Harbor, it is a hundred dollars per foot per month. So it's a hundred dollars per foot per month. So yeah, think about that. If you've got one of those 40 footers or something like that, okay, that's 40 times, that's 4,000 bucks a month just to store your, your ship, all right, or your boat. 4,000 bucks a month. I don't know about you, but instructors around UMKC, that's about, you know, what we make. <laughs> so anyway, um, so unless I lived on that thing and didn't eat, um, all right. And that's all I had was my boat. I'm in the harbor. Aren't I cool? I have no clothes and nothing to eat, but that's okay. All right. Anyway, I guess freedom's when you got nothing left to lose. But anyway, all right. So anyway, that's that's where that works. Oh, but in the interim, you've got a you've got a magnetic field that's going like this. It's coming out and going in, coming out and going in. In other words, just like. All that stuff that drove you completely crazy on the test, all that perpendicular thing, these, this thing right here is going on here, okay? And so that's why, so let me get back to the boats. You got some antennas that look like this, which are catching the, electro wa the electromagnetic wave, or the E field, and then you got the antenna underneath it like this, which is picking up the B field. So it's giving it a one-two punch to pick up that frequency, okay? So, because, yeah, it might be the other way around. So whatever, one of those, all right? So that's the, way, that's the way an antenna works, all right? And it all comes, things are emitted through an electromagnetic wave. It all comes from, you have to accelerate a particle first. And that's why this thing is going, you've got a, um, it takes AC to do it. Because when you're doing AC, the, electro, the, the current is going like this. So therefore it's changing direction, so therefore it's accelerating, okay? All right, good. I think we beat that horse to death. Now let's look at the let's look at this thing. Slide show, view show. Okay, let me get through here real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, this is all your favorite stuff here. Good old lens law. We're done with that. It's over. It's over. It's like a bad dream. All right, never happened. 
We're ready to move on. Okay. Transformers, power submission, electromagnetic waves. Here you go. Okay, a time varying uh, magnetic field produces a time varying electric field. Vice versa, a time varying electric field produces a time varying magnetic field. This is all the stuff that uh, Maxwell, he, Faraday did a lot of the work. All those guys, Faraday, Henry, um, uh, I don't know, to start Watt, all these, uh, all these scientists from back then. Um, in the 1800s were doing all this work starting even Ben Franklin you can throw him in there he, Ben Franklin doesn't get his propers I don't think for being one of the best greatest American scientists and mathematicians I mean because he did everything the guy did everything all right plus fathered 17 children you know he had time to do that too but anyway some of them he didn't claim but anyways uh, they all did that they all did that but anyway uh, we have studied the first, but the second is new. We will not study in detail, but we'll use some of its consequences. All right. In other words, it starts to get, if you want to really get into this stuff, you can take physics 460. Oh, by the way, you all now, pretty soon, you're going to have eight hours of physics. Count them. It's eight hours of physics. You need 17 or 18 to get a minor. All right. So you know where I'm going with this. Um, next fall. All the, all the cool stuff that we don't teach you in the first two, you know, because we bore you to death with sliding blocks and pulleys and E-fields and stuff like that. Well, all the cool stuff that you future medical people will be doing, using, like CAT scans, MRIs, all that kind of stuff. We will learn. All, that's all modern physics things. Those are all things that came about because of quantum mechanics, relativity, and stuff like that. And that's what I'll be teaching next semester. It's the physics 350 class. Okay, so you're invited. You're invited. I would recommend that you have at least a year of calculus under your belt. Okay, because we do do a few things. But for the most part, we'll just be looking at quantum mechanics, relativity, um, all the kind of cool stuff, uh, the strong and weak nuclear force, nuclear things, um, and how they work. Okay? All right, now I'll be kind of learning it with you all. I mean, I've taken it all before, but I'm like, it'll be new. It'll be new for me, too. So. All right. All right. So anyway, here's your electromagnetic wave. Now notice, here's your E field going up and down here, and here's your B field coming out, going into the board, coming out, going into the board. When the B E field's at a maximum, so's the, uh, so's the B field. Um, now here's the interesting part, or I guess, or whatever. Anyway, in a vacuum, all, electronic, all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light when they're in a vacuum. As they're traveling through space, they, they are traveling at the speed of light. Now that we will learn later on that like when light waves hit glass, they get diffracted. Or when they hit water, they get diffracted. That's why it takes a special skill to be able to stab that fish that's down there in the pond when you're standing up here. Okay, Because he's actually not here. He's probably over there. All right, so you want to throw the spear. No, he's actually down here. You want to throw the spear at his nose so you just stab him right in his back type thing. All right. Anyway, um, this finite speed, in other words, nothing can go faster than that, leads to delays in transmitting signals over long distances such as spacecraft. That's why you get that delay. Now, sound is a heck of a lot slower than this. Sound is only 300 meters per second or so, or 330 meters per second. So it's, it's a million times slower than the light waves. That's why when you're at Royal Stadium or something like that, if you're sitting out in the bleachers, out in the outfield bleacher seats, you see somebody, unless Zach Granke's pitching, you see one of our pitchers, you know, throw up one of those baseballs that looks like that to a good hitter, and they slam it, um, and they crack the bat. That's why you see the ball coming at you before you hear the crack of the bat, because that, that light that's emitted from there gets to you much, a million times faster than the sound does. And that's also, how many of you have ever listened to, um, because you like Lynn Dawson's play-by-play -play much better than, and Mitch Holtz's much better than you care for, like, whoever. Because, let's face it, the Chiefs don't get exactly the A-team broadcasting their games, you know. Because it's like, oh, God, I got the Bills and the Chiefs. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Shoot me now. But anyway, um, 
So anyway, I like to listen to Mitch Holtis and, and the Lynn Dawson, but when you're watching the game on television, you got the radio on. Since the radio waves are sound, are, well, they're also electromagnetic waves, but the radio thing is much, much more slower than those television waves, um, those light things to the television. So that's why Lynn Dawson, you'll, you'll see a three-yard gain or a two-yard gain, which, you know, well, that is the good old days of Herm Edwards. He loved two-yard gains and a punt. That's his, that's his playbook. It's this long. Three running plays and a punt. We're winning now. Oh, well, at least he played, unlike, who's the guy now, Todd Haley? Todd Haley was a golf pro, so that's something. But someone needs to explain to him that the higher score wins in football, not the low end, because I think he still thinks the low score wins or something from his golf days. But anyway, I'll stop cracking on the Chiefs, but they deserve it. I mean, minimum salary, a million dollars. Give me a break. You can do better than that. All right. Anyway, oh, well, all right, so that's that. I don't know how waves got us to the Chiefs. Anyway, all right, they, you do feel, um, oh, because I was talking about the different ways of broadcasting it. Um, you do feel an electromagnetic wave transmits energy, and its electric and magnetic fields are capable of accelerating charged particles, okay, and that will exert a force on any surface it intercepts. So there's actually, you're feeling the force, I like the, there is a force, there's, uh, it's called the radiation pressure, but it's negligible to us. We barely, we, we don't really feel it. We do feel the air pressure that's on us, but we're so used to it, we don't feel that 13 pounds per square inch that's smashing down on us all over the place. More so the higher we are than um, lower. Uh, but anyway, so anyway, um, it's called the radiation pressure. It's neg but, but it might be used someday to power... To, as uh, my friend Mike Kelly was talking about, he said, we'll use it to, we'll send out this voltage and it'll, these electro, this, elect, this electric field against a big sail because you don't, if there's no friction, like out in deep dark space, there's no other forces, it doesn't take much of a force to get something to move, okay? So we're maybe looking at those. All right. All right, now here's, the, here's what I wanted to talk about. Here we go. Here is, all right, now I do want you to write this down. I do want you to write this down. I'll write it down on both sides. That C is equal to lambda times the frequency. I think you chemistry people are more used to lambda times H, aren't you? Don't you see that? Lambda H, and that what you guys did for spectroscopy stuff? Yeah, so here it is. C equals lambda times the frequency, where lambda is the wavelength, okay? Lambda is the wavelength. So, if we come out here, all right. I wish they showed the, the actual, the, uh, your old book. My goodness, Cutnell and Johnson wins on this chart. The, the old book wins on this chart because this is showing the, um, this is showing the frequency in hertz, but it's not showing the wavelength. All right, so the wavelength for radio and TV waves, it's really long, all right? It's really long, several, thousand, several meters long. It's a big wamba wamba thing, okay? Big old long wavelength, all right? And um, you can't put a whole lot of information on it because the frequency is not that high, but we can get enough to put a picture on there. We got enough frequency that we can put uh, sound things on there. But to carry all that now, your cell phone, what kind of waves make it work, do you think? Which one of these, radio, TV, microwave, infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray, which one is it? Microwave, right. That's what all those microwave towers are up there for. So it's a much, it's a, uh, look at the frequency, and there, you're probably in the 10 to the 12th. So all of a sudden, you're, you've got, you can put a million times more information basically is what we're saying on here because it's bouncing back a million times faster up and down. So, it, so each up and down is a one or a zero. That's information, okay? So if you can get a million times more ups and downs than this one, you can put a lot more information on there. So therefore, you can with your little iPhone, you know, you can, you can surf the web while you're on hold, as they say on all the commercials and all that kind of stuff because 
tons of stuff, not with Sprint. Uh, well, we don't want to go down that road because some people might be working there still, barely. Um, uh, but anyway, all right, now then. So this is kind of cool because you all have taken chemistry and I've, all right, so you all have taken, see, this is kind of where this, start, this stuff starts to get cool. Because so far, the only math I've thrown at you all day is that the speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. All right? So as the frequency increases, as this number gets bigger, what happens to my wavelength? It gets much, much, much shorter. Okay? It gets much, much, much shorter. Now, microwaves. Microwaves. This is also the way a microwave oven works. Now then, you all know from chemistry that a, that a water molecule, most, most matter, most stuff we eat and things like that, meat, potatoes, those kinds of things, they, they're made up mostly of water, right? Water molecules are in there. And you all know from chemistry that water molecules have a plus and a minus, right? They're a little bit polarized there, okay? Just a little bit polarized. So what those microwaves do is they, you shoot the microwave, and these things will go through you. It's like I can put my hand over a radio receiver and the wave will get through there anyway. But it'll, the, the microwave will penetrate. And what it's going to do is at this high frequency of 10 to the 10th here, um, it will hit the, it'll sit there and it will cause that radiation pressure that will that'll hit those water molecules. They're polarized. They'll go, ooh, I'm getting agitated. I'm getting all excited. And so when they get all excited, they, it's like a big mosh pit, and they bang into each other. Well, what's that cause when things bang into each other? Friction and heat, okay? And that's why things heat up. And this is, 10 to the, this is this huge frequency right here, so it happens really fast. That's the way microwaves work. And then some of those things, like the microwave, the stuff, um, the coffee mug that you put in there doesn't have that much water in it, so it doesn't get hot. It's the microwave just passes through it and it goes, oh, I don't care. I'm not getting agitated because my lattice structure says I'm not moving. Okay? But the water in there, your coffee or whatever, your tea, is a lot of water and it gets all agitated, bangs into each other and gets very hot. That's the way microwaves work. So um, there you go. How things work. All right. Um, and then as we move up right here in this very, very small band, Right here in this very, very small band is visible light, okay, is visible light. Now, right before it, at 10 to the 14th, or right in here, at 10 to the 14th, 10 to the 13th, 10 to the 14th frequency is infrared, all right? Now then, with special equipment, I can, like night vision goggles or things like infrared goggles. Did y'all see, y'all remember the old movie Predator? Did y'all see that movie? Did y'all see Predator? Oh, okay, cool. You remember Predator, he could see Arnold in, with the, in infrared. That was the big thing about the Predator. He could see infrared. Well, what's he seeing? He's seeing the heat that you're putting out. Because that's, 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 as we found out, that's a radiation type thing. It's at a certain frequency. And so it's your heat that you're putting out. So when Arnold covered himself in mud and stuff, the guy couldn't see. Whatever. Well, so, anyway. But he could see. Now. The thing is, have you all seen the, the new, well, I guess they're, they're new to me because back when I first came in the Marine Corps, we still had sateens, believe it or not. But anyway, um, the new Army and Navy uniforms that you see, they look all digit, they're called digitized or they're digital type things. They look all funny. They got the little squares. That is so. The reason they have those is because we've got, you know, the bad guys and the good guys have infrared scopes that they can look at. So you can see a bunch of um, you can see a bunch of people moving about in darkness. You see all these like little red things moving around, these red blobs moving around. But if you're wearing those camouflage things, they break up that signal. The, they're the digitized thing breaks up that signal, so you can't pick up the infrared thing very well. So that's why they have them. That's why they went to them. Okay, and when you know, when we were in Desert Storm a long time ago, that was when cell phones were first kind of coming in. And in third world countries and things like that, or just other countries, um, mainly third world countries or, or less developed countries in the United States, they like cell phones better than landlines because they're cheaper. You just build a microwave tower. You don't have to build all these lines all over the place, all these landline things all over the place. And so the Iraqis, 
<laughs> bless their hearts, that was the way they communicated with each other. Well, our satellites would pick up that microwave signal. So when they'd call up, oh, bing, ding, 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 and lights out, you know, within, you know, the poor guy, he's just, you know, making a call, you know, saying, hey, I see Marines coming this way, and all of a sudden, you know, there's 12 F-18s on his position, you know, and sorry, but anyway, you should be encrypted, but I guess not. All right, so anyway, now, and as we go up here, we get to the ultraviolet light, gamma rays, and x-rays, and things like that which can be very, very harmful to you because they're high frequency. They can really disrupt the, your cell structure. All right, so anyway, that's the whole thing on electromagnetic waves. And they radiate through space and they pass through things. And, um, and we will learn later on that, of course, the further away you get from a source, the, the, they dissipate um, and things like that. But they're traveling through. There's just all kinds of electromagnetic waves bouncing around here. Every, every different color that you see, everything, um, the different temperatures that you feel, those are all electromagnetic waves that are moving about. Okay? So, oh, well, here's the, oh, good. Oh, good. Here it was. Here's the frequency, and here's the wavelength. I knew they'd have that eventually. Warm and hot bodies. I think. I, th I think they're meaning planetary things, not like movie stars or anything like that. <laughs> Penelope Cruz or, you know, but, all right. Okay, what is this? Oh, that's a repeat, that's a review for chapter 20. Y'all wanna go through that nightmare again? I didn't think so, all right. Okay, now, now then, now then, now then. Let's go to this thing one more time. And guess what you all did in lab? Something you weren't ready for at all. Did you all do impedance in the lab? Did you, did you have any idea what you were doing? No. I didn't think so. You will, you will by Friday. You'll know exactly what to do. Have you had to write up that lab yet? Yeah, yeah you already wrote it up. Did Ting Yi pass you? She probably did. Good, right? Because she, she knew what she was doing, so she taught it probably better than I could anyway. So, but let's take a look at what, was, what we're actually doing there. All right. Now, basically, basically what we're doing, what you were doing was you were building an AC circuit with a capacitor and, well, you had an AC circuit with a capacitor, a resistor, and an inductor. Now, an inductor is something you're not used to, okay? An inductor is something you haven't seen. But remember, an inductor is just a coil. In fact, here's an inductor right here. It's, a, it's just a coil. And so when you've got current alternating through this wire, what's ha what kind of magnetic field? You've got a solid magnetic field going through here like this, right? Okay. So you've got a magnetic field going through there. And so if your current's always changing, then so is your magnetic field. Well, guess what that produces? That produces a back EMF, a voltage in here too. So it creates a voltage. A capacitor we've already seen when it loads up on both sides, that creates a voltage. All right, so we got two things. This one, when this one's completely charged, this one has no energy. When this one has all its energy, this one has no energy, but they can bounce back and forth. And so I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. We're going to build this thing real quick. Boom, boom, boom. Big old capacitor. All right. There we go. Another wire here. We're going to use AC voltage. Okay, I'm going to, now notice, this thing is charging up. It's charging up and going back down, charging up and going back down, charging up, going back down. Now, hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me get the voltage up, turn that voltage up. There we go. Get some more voltage. So you can actually see the thing moving back and forth. Now, I've got this around 40, so when this reaches its maximum charge at 40, it should, um, this, should have a char this should have a thing of 40, and this will have a voltage of about 40. Well, let me see. Let's get the voltmeter out here. Right now, it's kind of small, but it should be varying between, come on, don't make a liar of me. Well, that's not doing very much. 
Okay. What was this? Okay, there we go. And then this one. Okay, now that one's behaving like it should, but that other, that capacitor wasn't. All right. Now then, or like I thought it would. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to charge that capacitor up quite a bit. And I'm going to remove this. Oh, shoot. Okay, here's what I want to do. Hold on a second. Is there a battery? Where is it? Oh, thank you. Let me just charge it this way. There we go. Now, we, we oh, but that inductor is causing it to, there we go. Now, I've got it all nice and charged. Okay, now, notice, this is, I've got a bunch of positive charge and negative charge over here. All right? And this thing, now, this thing looks like it's pretty fully charged. This thing doesn't have a whole lot of energy in it, in its B field. And this is a lot like a spring. Okay, this is like when I have the spring, this part is like when I have the spring way out here. I let it go. It goes to its neutral, it goes through its neutral spot when this is about half charged, then it smashes all the way in. That's when this will be fully charged. Then what happens? It shoots it back out. So, theoretically, if we could come up with a super, or a, uh, a wire with absolutely no resistance, we could set up a perpetual motion machine with these things. Because watch. It should go, it should get a current going, and it'll stop, and it'll come back the other way. Now the capacitor will start discharging, 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 dis there it goes. Then it charges up, up, up on the other side until it can't go any further, and then it'll come back the other way. So you could, remember, all you need is amperage to move for lights to work and things like that. So, so all these things are ways to control current inside a circuit because if your current's out of control in the circuit it'll burn things up and that's not good all right so that's the big overview of what we're going to be doing okay that's the big idea behind what we're doing here so let's go to this slideshow okay there's your book okay we'll talk about all that stuff all right we're going to talk about resistance in an ac circuit we're going to talk about capacitive reactants, inductive reactants, all those things you're reading. Because I know, I know every one of you reads your lab manual before you go to lab. So you know exactly what to do. Right, Ben's going, right, sure, sure. I do it every time. Okay, liars. All right, anyway, at least some of you are just sitting there going, yeah, right. I don't even know what it says when I, all right, anyway. Okay. All right. We got about, oh, 15 minutes to go, so we'll get through uh, where we have a resistor in there. Basically, what we're going to get to is the uh, VRMS, all right? The root mean squared. That's, that's, let me write that idea down here. We'll write, we'll write this one in blue. Two things with, you got VRMS which stands for the root mean square. Now there's all kinds of algebra and trig gobbledygook that we could do to show it, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to tell you that the root mean squared is equal to the maximum, the peak voltage. We'll talk about, okay, we'll talk about the peak voltage divided by the square root of two. Okay? And the same thing with the amperage, root mean squared, is the peak amperage going through a circuit divided by the square root of two. Okay? And so when we say that when we say that our circuit, when we say that our outlet is 120, that's the root mean square. That's the VRMS. Okay? So it'll fluctuate between well it's, it's it'll fluctuate between positive 170 and negative 170. But the root mean square is positive 120 and negative 120. Okay? That's, that's the average voltage that comes out of there, all right? Because it's AC, it's going to go up and down. Yeah, Sean? Oh, because there's, you can read in your book. It'll show you all the trig identities that they used to come up with that. I didn't want to do that. This isn't a trig class. All right, so. All right. Okay. So there's the, oh, and... And know this, know this, that the VRMS equals, okay, 
What did Ohm's law say way back? One of the first little electricity laws you learned, Ohm's law, the biggie. What's it say? V equals IR. So VRMS equals the IRMS times the resistance. Okay? And what we're going to find out is that these capacitors and inductors, when we put them in a circuit, they act like resistors. They, act, they, they do double duty. They act like resistors and voltage at the same time. They're kind of strange. But they do slow down. They do, they do impede the current. That's why it's called impedance. Because when you add resistance, that slows the current down. All right? So we'll get to all that stuff. So those of you on this side, what we're saying is VRMS equals IRMS times R. And we're going to be expanding this idea of R, the, the resistance here, with the uh, inductive uh, reactive capacitance and the inductive capacitance. OK? It'll be fun. You'll see. It's not bad. All right, so here they're kind of showing you as it goes through a cycle, the average value, both the voltage, the circuit over a complete cycle is 0. OK? All right. Okay, so when it goes through one cycle, that's one period, all right? How many cycles are our lights going through in one second? Exactly, 60. We're on 60 hertz, okay? We've got a 60 hertz frequency. So it's going ding, 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 ding. It's going back and forth. That voltage is going through. The voltage is going through a peak value. That's in 1 60th of a second, okay? And it does that 60 times in one second, all right? And so you can't pick up when it's at zero, ever. You can't see when it's at zero because the lights are out then, believe it or not. Okay, it's dark. If we slowed time way down, all of a sudden we'd, we'd be going, it'd be, it'd be kind of oogly. But anyway, all right. I, I don't know if the light would, I don't know. Because the current... You no, know, yeah, because they both hit zero at the same time. Yeah, you wouldn't have any current either. That is why, but you guys, th those of us that were born and bred here in the United States, we're used to the 60 hertz, okay? That's why when you go to Europe, where it's at 50 hertz, it's a little bit slower, okay? It's a little bit slower, and you can kind of, and things just seem a little bit fuzzy. You kind of can kind of pick up the flicker when you're over there for a little while. It's kind of weird when you're in Europe or in Asia too. I think Asia is at 50 hertz too. They use, they use a smaller frequency, bigger voltage. They use a VRMS of 220 to 240 in Asia and Europe. That's why you need, a, that's why you need an adapter. Well, I think that was one of your questions on one of your first tests was, will, this, will your hair dryer work in France? The answer was no. Okay. All right. So here we go. Oh, here's the instantaneous power can be attained this way. Oh, here's all that root mean square stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about it. All right. So basically, basically we're going to look at because oh, what does power equal again? Remember the the power thing. P equals I V. Right. It equals the amperage times the voltage because remember. Uh, uh, energy, joules, is equal to charge times voltage. So charge divided by time, that's amperage. So amperage times voltage is power. Okay? All right. So anyway, um, the average power going through things. So that's what they're showing you here, is this is what the power looks like going through just an just a, um, AC circuit with a resistor. The power is just half. It, it averages half the maximum power. And p naught. P naught would equal this. P naught equals um, I naught times V naught, which are the which are the max amperage and max power. But then the average power is just half that. Okay. All right. Okay. It's all good. Okay. They. Oh, there you go. There's your root mean square. Square root of two. You take that I squared. Yep. Yeah, uh huh. Yep. Sure do. Uh huh. Got it. Yep. There we go. And we wind up with, uh, oh, I think even now, I mean, back when I was in high school in the 70s, this was like, this was like saying ain't 
in an English paper. You know, you just didn't do this. You just didn't put the square root in the, um, in the denominator. I don't know why. I think it's because, I think it's a Cold War thing because we didn't like radicals in the basement. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, that was bad. That was terrible. Okay. Boy, I think it's almost time to go. If you guys are laughing at that one, it's a nice day outside. I can tell. All right. Anyway. All right. But anyway, this, this works for me. I, I, you know, I don't know why they, they were so, huh, you can't have a denominator. You know, you can't have a radical denominator. Oh, well. I don't know why. Okay. So there we go, VRMS, IRMS, we already learned all that stuff, resistance. Okay, capacitive reactants. All right, this is when we just add a capacitor to a voltage, all right? Now this thing will slow it down, and it's dependent upon the frequency. Here's the, here's the second, oh, you've forgotten a little math, you can't avoid a little bit of math, but see, this stuff is real straightforward, and I'm going to keep it very straightforward and we'll do some examples on Friday when we finish this up and I'm not going to give you any homework this week because you guys got that little test you got to do. How, have you guys started that test? Did, did you do it? Did it go okay? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, what's that? Oh, okay. All right, um, but anyway, yeah, so I just want you to get that done, all right, so we can up those test scores, please, let's get them up there. All right, um, is there anything, else? oh yeah, by the way, I know this is kind of dirty pool to some of you, but I'm sorry, um, by the way, did you, did you all know you took a quiz on Monday? If I gave you your test back, you passed the quiz, you got 10 points for showing up to get your test back. All right. Those of you who showed up today, I'll give you your 10. All right. <laughs> I do. I have to change my shirt three times a day because my heart bleeds all over it for you guys. But anyway. Uh, all right. What's that? It's on, it's on quiz eight. You'll, you'll see it on quiz eight. You've got, you'll be like, quiz eight. I remember doing quiz eight. Well, yeah, you did. You picked up your test so I don't have all this. And Caitlin, you're covered. Don't worry, because you were sick. You're, you're fine. She's like, wait a minute. Oh, that was six years. Got to be calm with them. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Sorry. I got you all wound up now. I think we should just, let me get through this, then we'll call it a day. All right. Because I forgot about all that stuff on the electromagnetic wave, which is really cool. And I just wanted to introduce it. Now, we're going to talk about it quite a bit more when we get to light and things like that. But anyway, all right, so we can define the capacitive resistant reactants. Now, a cool little problem, something that we could do to really drive you crazy here, is we could say why, hold on now, we could say why is this in ohms? Believe it or not, capacitive, this funny little equation here, this funny little equation here is in ohms. It's a way to increase the resistance. All right, so what happens to this XC? What happens to this XC if I get C really big? If I start, if I want to increase my capacitance, what happens to XC? It gets a lot smaller, right? So I decrease my resistance, and and um, and that makes sense because if I get C bigger, that means it, can you re remember visualize um, that capacitor with just a DC current going to it, it's building up the charge, building up the charge. If it can hold a lot more charge, then that means the current keeps flowing, okay? But, if, but when, it gets, when it gets all full, then the current stops for a minute, and then it discharges and goes the other way, all right? So, so bigger capacitance, I get less resistance. What happens if I increase my frequency? What happens if I increase my frequency on my generator? I crank it up crank up the frequency, what happens to this? It gets smaller too. Okay, so, and I'll write it on this side too. So in other words, your XC, your frequency, now, if I was in the mood to give a quiz, I'd say, how does XC come out to be ohms? And I'd have you do that little 
drill, but eh. Because what does C equal? Do you remember? Q equals CV, so it's charge over voltage, right? Is equal to your capacitance. But anyway, and then you throw in your frequency. Ooh, gets ugly. But anyway, so XC, as frequency is less, it, it, it's, a, it's a chart that looks like that. So as my frequency goes out to infinity, my resistance there goes to nothing in, in that thing. Because it doesn't have time to collect any charge. It's going bam, 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 bam so fast that no charge collects on that capacitor, so it doesn't slow the current whatsoever. All right, I'm out of gas. That's good. Y'all can go. We are done. We are done. We are done. So some of you, like Sarah King and a few others, you got your test back today.